Despite the fact that I'm awkward, I promise, <laughs> we will get a video. I mean, you want me to run this thing? <laughs> My confidence is shattered. <laughs> I'm that fragile. Hi, Gun Geeks. I'm Destiny with Gun Gear and Fitness, and this is Steve Morgan from Vortex Optics. This video will be five things to consider when you're looking to purchase a high quality piece of glass. And we're outside today because it's gorgeous out and I needed an excuse to go be outside. All right, that being said, Steve, thank you for coming out here and talking with me about not just your glass, but about glass in general, seeing as how you have a, quite a bit more of an expert opinion than I do in this, this stuff. Um, to start off with, I think one of the things that we had talked about that I'd like to know, know a little bit more about is first focal plane versus second focal plane. What's the difference? Why should I be looking at that? What's the story? Well, it's first focal plane versus second focal plane um, has to do with where the reticle is in relationship to the target image. So a lot of traditional hunting scopes that are out there are second focal plane scope, which means when you crank the magnification ring on the scope, the target image will get bigger, but the reticle stays the same size, which is fine if you're running a standard reticle, kind of like our V-Plex, um, where there is no measurements in the reticle itself. But if you're going to be using a reticle for measurement or ranging or wind holds or elevation holds, um, it gets a little bit tricky because as you decrease your magnification, you're increasing the value of the marks represented in the reticle itself. So. Generally, long-range shooters or anybody kind of in a tactical or law enforcement application will run a first focal plane scope because they know that if it mills out at one mil at six power, it'll be one mil at 12 power, one mil at 24 power. It doesn't matter where they are, everything's gonna be accurate. So you mentioned mill. That brings us to the next thing that I wanted to talk about. Mill versus MOA, what do you guys prefer? I think most of what I've shot has been mill up to, that, up to this point, but what's the difference? So a mill, and an MOA are just different units of angular measurement, like inches and centimeters. Um, they all represent a given space. Um, it's just a different way to do the math and a different way to set the scopes up. So with MOA, roughly speaking, you're looking at about one inch at 100 yards. Um, it's not quite exactly that, but in general terms, a uh, mil is one centimeter at 100 meters. So a lot of the MOA scopes have quarter minute adjustments in the turrets. So one click will move it approximately a quarter of an inch at 100 yards, your point of impact. Um, with a mill scope, um, a lot of them have a one-tenth MRAD click or one-tenth mill click. So one click will move it one-tenth, um, yeah, one-tenth of a centimeter at 100 meters. Oh, that's really close. Third thing, tube diameter. What, what are the differences and what should I be looking for? What will give me the most value? With tube diameter, a lot of people seem to think with a larger tube, you're letting more light through the scope. Um, we're not pouring water through the glass, so that's not quite how it works out. With tube diameter, one of the big things is the amount of travel you have in the turrets. The larger the tube, like a big 34 millimeter, you're gonna get a lot more internal adjustment inside of the scope as that elevator runs up and down. Um, so you'll be able to dial a lot farther for shooting longer ranges. Whereas with something smaller like a one inch tube, it's gonna limit how much that reticle is gonna move. But this scope with a smaller tube is more designed for zeroing at once, leaving it there, taking it out in the woods and shooting deer, or shooting targets, whatever you wanna shoot um, at a limited range. Fourth thing, reticle. Now I noticed uh, with the variety of scopes that I've been able to shoot with you guys lately that I ended up preferring reticles with a lot of information on it but I think he would have mentioned when I brought it up that maybe someone who's hunting is going to have a, a different preference. So what are different reticle options and the value of each of them? So there's thousands of different reticle options out there in scopes. It's mind-boggling once you actually start looking at all the numbers and all the, offer or the offerings from all the companies that are out there but it breaks down into kind of three basic categories. There's a clean, very simple reticle, something like our V-Plex, um, just a plain crosshair. Um, that is more suited for kind of the hunter who's not gonna be dialing at all. He wants something quick, so if he's shooting with a cluttered background, shooting in the woods, something like that, he can bring the gun up, look through the scope, and he knows exactly where the center point of that is so he can shoot quickly. Um, another one is a BDC. A lot of the BDCs that are out there are kind of generic BDCs. 
They're not necessarily calibrated for any one particular bullet or velocity. Um, they're just designed to get you close at each given distance. And then you have the milling or mill type reticles, which can be either MOA or mill, whatever kind of math you like doing. And they give you a lot of information as far as uh, reference marks for ranging a target or bullet hold over, wind holds, leads, anything like that. People tend to think they're a little bit busy when they first start playing with them, but shoot them for a little while and you'll never go back to anything else. Yeah, I ended up liking those ones. So it's, it made it easier for me to judge, especially when we started pushing out further distances where it should be holding for wind. Oh, speaking of holding, that's another thing to consider, hold versus dialing. Yeah, so when, when you're shooting, um, there's a lot of scopes that are available out there with different kinds of turrets. So the ones with cap turrets, um, generally kind of more the hunting style turret. So they have a protective cap on them. And what that cap does, it stops the turret from moving accidentally. If it's gonna be going in and out of scabbards or you're riding in back country on horses, something like that, you don't want your turrets to turn, um, run with a cap turret. You're not gonna be dialing a whole lot with it because it is protected. Generally, there's smaller, lower profile turrets as well. Um, and then that, you wanna kinda of look for a reticle that you're gonna be able to hold a lot better with like a BDC or a mill type reticle um, that you're gonna be holding with. Then you have the larger exposed turrets um, that's for dialing. So holding, you're gonna be a little bit quicker but not quite as precise. Um, for dialing, I really like dialing because I can get really precise. I know exactly where it's gonna be. If I need to come up a 10th mil or a quarter MOA, I know one click and that's gonna make my adjustment for me. So for these, generally, when you're shooting at distance, if you have 5.4 mils that you need to move that turret, you spin at 5.4, hold center aim, and uh, drop the bullet in on the target. Now that's, those are just some points. These are five things to consider, but it's definitely not an all-inclusive list. So if there are any other points that you're looking for when you're looking to evaluate a piece of glass and whether or not you should spend your money on it, feel free to include that in the comments. Now, aside from these these points what my experience has been with or what my experience has been last couple of days has been with vortex so i want to talk just a little bit about vortex and the first thing that i saw when i even walked into the facility which i'm out in in madison checking out the facility i noticed your warranty case and you were telling me a little bit about the story of the warranty case you have all of these this collections of destroyed yeah. optics and they each have a story I'd like to know a little bit more about that for those who aren't familiar with uh, Vortex's awesome inspection and warranty process. So our, our warranty, we call it the VIP warranty. And what that stands for is very important promise. Um, anything ever happens to our glass, we will repair or replace it for free forever. Um, anything outside of loss or theft, we will make sure that you get either a new scope or a scope like new back. Um, doesn't matter who does what to it. If you run it over with your truck, we'll fix it or replace it. If you get tired of it, sell it to your brother, he throws it off a cliff, I'll send him a new scope. It's doesn't matter what happens to it, we'll take care of it. We want to take care of our customers forever because that's what they are. Once they're part of the Vortex Nation, then they'll be there forever. When I was walking through the facility, I well noticed the warranty case, but then I also, we walked through one room where people were like dialing into this apparatus I've never even seen before. And I believe you told me that was your inspection department. Can you talk a little bit about um, what, what are people looking for when they're doing that? What does that whole job entail? So those guys are awesome. It is our inspection department. They, uh, they're the guys who go through all the glass and they make sure that all the turrets dial right, the scope tracks straight, all the glass is good, there's no inclusions, uh, we don't have loose objective cells, they make sure everything is right so by the time the consumer gets it, um, they know that they don't have anything to worry about. With um, most of our products, every single scope goes through, our PST series and our Razor series, every single scope that goes through our doors gets inspected, it all gets looked at, they all get tap tested, they all have tracking, everything is good to go. And that little apparatus you're talking about is called a collimator. And it's what we set the scope up. It's a kind of an optical system. We set the scopes up on it and we can look and see exactly how far the reticle travels with each click of the dial, exactly how far it's going with each full rotation. We can see if there's any shifting elements inside of the glass by the way the grid lines up against the reticle. It's a pretty neat tool and it's really, really versatile. It helps us out a lot. 
I was pretty surprised with like all the people who were back in the inspection department. They all were really super focused. I just, in general, walking through the facility, I noticed, I don't know, maybe it's just like as a customer, I think it's kind of neat that everybody cares so much. The atmosphere was really relaxed, but everyone was very dialed into what they were doing. You seemed to be very efficient considering the volume of people that you had. Um, can you just tell us a little bit more about like Vortex? Just Yeah, we're a... Uh, and the people who go into the Vortex? Privately owned company, um, veteran owned. It's owned by one family. His sons both work, or sons all work there. We've got four of his sons. It's the Hamilton family, great group of guys. Um, I've never worked anywhere before or seen any other company in the industry that treats every employee like a family member. It's, I mean, you saw today, we had our birthday party there and- That was cool. <laughs> it was my birthday this month, so they sang happy <laughs> birthday to me. And I mean, it's, it's just the family and the cohesions there. And everybody is passionate about what they do. There's, it doesn't matter what their position is there at the factory, they, whether they're collecting payment or sending payment out or making sales or doing inspections or repairing rifle scopes, everybody cares about what they do. Well, thank you for giving me the opportunity to, you know, take me out to the range and teach me how to shoot, you know. <laughs> That's always fun. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a really remarkable experience. I hope you guys enjoy the footage from that. I have more still to show. And also for walking me through and showing me a little bit more about Vortex and teaching me about glass, which I'm certainly a novice. I appreciate having your, your expert opinion in there. So thank you. Not a problem. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. And guys, if there was anything on, on the list that I didn't mention or if you had any questions for Steve or anyone else at Vortex, feel free to pop it in the comments and we'll see you next time.